Elizabeth Butler needs to be uh, played. State Senator Janet Springham from the 15th Senate District. Uh, she is a good friend of labor also. Uh, she served two terms in the Assembly. In this last go around, she was elected to the State Senate for the 15th Senate District. She is a very strong union supporter. Uh, her family is uh, involved with the UAW also. And at this time, I'd like to introduce State Senator Janice Springham. Thank you, Ivan. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know you're from all over the state, and you've been looking out the window to see what the weather's doing, and you're ready to go home. And I don't blame you. I drove in from Evansville this morning, and that stuff just kept freezing to the windshield. So it's a little bit nasty out there. So I will be brief. So as Ivan mentioned, uh, I'm from Evansville, just south of Madison, 25 miles. I got involved in local government back in 1998, running for city council and then served as mayor, and then got elected to the state assembly in 2010, started service in 2011, served two terms in the assembly. After my first term, I got drawn out of my district with redistricting, so I had to basically start from scratch and learn a new district all over again. But it was uh, fortunate for me that I gained more of Rock County, which is my home base, so it turned out very well. And then Senator Tim Cullen retired last session, so I was able to win his seat in the Senate. And I'm really happy to be here. But like so many of my colleagues, we just didn't shake our heads every time we're in session. And we see what Governor Walker and his Joe and Boss and company are up to. And I know you're all very well aware of the consequences of Act 10, the right to work, the prevailing wage laws that have all hurt labor in such a big way. And the labor issues are huge to me because, as I had mentioned, my husband was a UAW member for over 35 years. He worked at the car carriers for General Motors. He worked in the shop as a diesel mechanic. So we had a very strong union life, and we know how these blows hurt our union families. And we depend on these good-paying jobs. We also depend on the education for our children so that they can get into those jobs. And the cuts to education have really been an issue for me because I'm a strong supporter of the skilled trades, the technical trades, which you are all members of. My husband being a mechanic, he was considered skilled trades. And I very strongly supported that, and I still do, and I continue to push for more money to be put into those schools. And actually, the public is starting to listen a little bit, and a lot of it is because the baby boomers are retiring, and so there are some openings in those skilled trades now. So people are starting to re-realize the value of what those jobs provide. So I know when you guys all get ready to retire, at least there is once again an interest in doing the types of jobs you have. Young people are truly seeing the value and that they can get a good paying job with a one or two year degree by learning those technical skills. So I truly support funding for our education. And uh, we do have a final session coming up in the Senate. The Assembly's already done. They were done the 29th of February, and they won't come back unless we change some bills that they've already passed. And I'm not sure how, if or that will happen or not. We don't know yet what will be on the agenda for March 15th. We know that there are up to 200 bills that we could see. But there's also a financial cap. The governor said that he's not going to allow any more than $20 million in spending that hasn't already been designated. And almost every bill that comes across our desks has a financial attachment to it. So if they cut everything back to $20 million, we could quit in about five or ten bills and just go home. We could be done. But that probably won't happen. So there are a few out there that we know are going to be before us, That some that may affect you. Unemployment insurance bill coming forward, we will more than likely vote on that. And I think that one will pass because it's a bipartisan effort. It's the agreed upon language for unemployment insurance. And uh, it just we're really watching the language of it because if you make an honest mistake, they could revoke your unemployment benefits for seven years. We don't feel that's right. And they're also trying to get some changes in the language as to how long you can be off work without having to apply for jobs. Because we have a lot of seasonal workers that are off 12 to 20 weeks throughout the winter. It depends on how long the winter is. So we would like to see them exempted from job searches, knowing they're going to go back to their jobs again. 
So that's one that we know we'll be getting. Another big one that could affect everyone in the state is the ability to sell water utilities. And having been a former local elected, I am not at all in favor of that. Our local utilities are very well run. They are very well maintained and monitored. And this bill was written up for one entity and one entity alone. It's called Aqua America. And it's a firm out of Pennsylvania that buys up utilities in communities that are having financial struggles. And they do not want to put the money into it. And they have investors that they have to provide a rate of return to. So the price will go up. There's only one city in Wisconsin right now that has a privately owned utility and that's Superior. And they, their water costs twice as much to their constituents as anybody else in the state. So we know it's not a good idea to have that ability to sell those utilities. So there's a lot of protest out there against that. So we'll continue to fight that way. <coughs> And there's also another one called Senate Bill 615 that has to do with uh, scholarships for special needs students. And Speaker Boss attached a bill to uh, attach an amendment to that that made a lot of people turn against that bill. And that amendment basically takes money away from schools because they're getting additional money through vouchers. So it would take money away from school districts. And it has all to do with the formula for their funding. He wants to put another cap on educational funding. So we're not in favor of that, and we're hoping that that one doesn't happen either. And uh, speaking of water, high capacity wells are another huge issue that we know will be coming to us. And that one is a fine balance. There are a lot of people out there that already have high capacity wells. A lot of our dairy farmers, which I have several of in my district, plus cheese factories and breweries. They use a lot of water from high capacity wells, but it's starting to affect our aquifers. So that's something that we're watching very closely and I'm not sure how that one's going to turn out yet. We'll have to see what they add to it or take away from it. And then one of the final ones we know we'll probably be getting is the sanctuary cities bill, which really affects our immigrant workers. And um, I happen, just so happened that just before I came here, I had one of the members of one of my local dairies in my office visiting. And um, besides the high capacity wells, the sanctuary cities bills that would send all of our immigrant workers back to their country of origin would literally incapacitate our dairies in this state and our cheese factories. It's just not a good idea. If they were concerned about immigrants settling here, they should have drawn the line 20, 30 years ago before they came here, settled in the families. And so that's a bill that we're probably going to be getting. And um, I'm not in favor of that one. I'd like to see them find a better solution than what they're offering. And then the final one that we think we'll probably we'll be getting is uh, something to do with driving with cell phones in your hand. So especially through construction zones. So I think that cell phones should be taken out of everybody's hands when they're driving, not just in construction zones. So we've got a variety of bills before us, some good, some bad. And uh, we'll have to see what they do decide to bring forward and how much they're willing to spend to get all this legislation passed. So that's what I've got for my report for right now. I've got a list of all the bills that the governor signed yesterday. There were about 50 of them that were signed behind closed doors once again. So um, a lot of them may not affect you, but one that was passed and signed yesterday was the workers' compensation changes. And uh, we'd already voted on that one, and um, the, uh, what was called the bad bill that John Spiro had out there was defeated. So this was the more compromising sound bill. So, that was, um, so unless there's anything that you have questions on, I will let you get out of the snowstorm, <laughs> or get into the snowstorm. Well, thank you all for being here. Okay. Yes. What was the change in the unemployment? Was, um, or was that defeated? Was there two bills? There were a couple of different bills out there, and the one that was agreed on by the UC committee is the one that's coming forward to us, and that's already passed the assembly, and it is the better version of it. Okay. That's not as there is the, still the one, the one provision that would disallow you to have unemployment for seven years if you made a mistake. And we're hoping that portion of it, that particular bill, does not come forward. But the other one is the agreed upon that people agreed on. So there's actually two different ones. So we're hoping that uh, SB 685 comes forward and AB 212 does not. So 
So there's two bells. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you all for being here today and drive safely on the way home. Thank you.